Imagine a school where all extracurriculars are student-led, that each student is passionate about a few things. They all work to achieve that one goal of planning the next semester's play all by themselves, or organizing the first student-led MUN meeting. This might seem like what we experience in our hallways, but is it really? The truth is that students are missing meetings and having to contemplate between showing up to a session or the next social event. This might be us describing a worst case scenario, but it is evident in not just our school, but most high schools. And why shouldn't it be? Neglecting responsibilities is a key characteristic of an average teenager. We all want to have fun. It's normal to want to prioritize times with friends instead of the band rehearsal or the council meeting you have. But there is one thing that doesn't make sense. ASAs or after school activities are optional. They aren't mandatory. They're a responsibility we choose to take. So if I choose to be a part of an activity today, why am I backing out on attending tomorrow? The truth is that while we're applying for all these curriculars, we're actually fantasizing. We are fantasizing about a perfect student, someone who is part of multiple ASAs and academically successful or well-rounded. The model student we all aspire to be. However, it's not just us. Society has blinded us to follow that fantasy. Therefore, we are conditioned to take all the steps necessary. When in fact, the reality is that you might not want to spend your Saturdays playing volleyball or hours after school creating resolutions. This becomes more and more apparent as time passes by. So why? Why do we have this need to tick boxes to paint this unrealistic image of this person we don't want to and honestly cannot become? So today, we will address the issue of how everyone pursues these additional activities because they need to, despite whether or not they want to, and we'll look at the ideas surrounding ambition versus obligation. So we're encouraged by our community to engage and participate in extracurricular activities for all the good reasons. Non-scholastic activities are crucial. They allow students to pursue interests outside of the standardized academic context and express themselves in unique ways. Not only does this benefit your transcript for universities, which we're sure most students should and do care about, but they help build social skills, expand your network and different career paths, academic performance, and basic life skills. Participating in school student activities and programs has been proven to have a positive correlation with better grades. The direct correlation between better grades and participation is clear. In a study done by the United States Department of Education, it was revealed that students who participated in organizations after school had three times more likely to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. Students involved in student-led organizations were observed during their freshman and senior year and were also noted to have higher de developments of life planning, career participation, cultural participation, and educational involvement. After school activities are not solely about imparting stronger professional skills and supplementing education. These programs are also fun and offer students the opportunity to spend time with others of similar interests. They give students other focuses to relieve academic pressure. These activities can also work to build professional skills that a classroom alone cannot always offer. Overall, they're a great way to broaden our high school experience, prepare us for the real world, and most importantly, allow us to have a privilege of choice. With everything, like extracurriculars, there comes benefits and disadvantages. The main downside we would like to focus on today is how extracurriculars are now viewed as more of a resume requirement rather than something you're passionate about. Whether it's getting, getting into an Ivy League or starting the new transformative startup of the um, next generation, the students of today are more aware about the competition waiting ahead of them, academically and in the real world. The pressure is more real and persistent than it has ever been. Therefore, we have learned to start young to prepare us. We know that it's not enough to just be academically, academically successful. That's just step one. <coughs> and by that, we mean a lot of students will join every extracurricular or social service committee they can. They'll join all the sports and musicals there are to offer. This has gone to the extent where ASAs have been, become a societal expectation. Through time, students have lost the passion for actually learning outside of academics, and now it's more materialistic. The added title on a transcript is given so much importance that the system has defied its point. Instead of joining an activity because of sparking a new interest or embarking on a new journey, the mindset has changed and not for the better. Not only has the awareness and internal pressure increased among youth, but the pressure from our parents. Expectations to take an addition to excelling each class, we will follow through with building that perfect all-rounder image. 
And the numbers reflect that. According to the United States Census Bureau, in 2019, 42% of school-aged children were involved in sports. 30% were involved in private lessons, 28% were involved in clubs, and 9% of children participated in all three extracurricular activities. In comparison to 80% of students in elementary school, a study done by Gallup, the analytical and statistical company in America, found that only 44% of high school students were truly engaged in their education. While children might experience some of the benefits we mentioned before, the reality is that or a busy organized activity schedule can put considerable strain on family relationships, parents' resources, and most importantly, children's development and well-being. Now, we aren't trying to throw parents under the bus, but rather have them be more aware, because students do tend to put this extra burden on themselves as well. <coughs> the stereotype of being the perfect student can deteriorate the mind, because that person may not be you. And this failure can have a significant negative effect on a student's life. When in reality, it may not even have been possible for them to succeed in the first place. Now, picture today's digital age, where we have the additional pressure of societal media, so social media. This means an increase in academic pressure, social integration, and most importantly, the addition of pressure of finding success outside of academics. All of this account for the high levels of stress and anxiety among students today. According to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, among children aged 6 to 17 years have, been, have ever been diagnosed with either anxiety or depression went from 5.4% in 20, 2003 to 8.4% in 2012. A study also found that in 2016, 39% of students were diagnosed with at least one mental illness. This direct correlation between mental health and um, societal pressures of ASAs really forces us to pose the question, is this really worth it? Is putting our mental health at such a great risk at such a young age, threatening our development for the later years to come, really worth for at the end of the day some mind-blowing transcript? Not only does this add extra stress and unwanted work on students, but it also emits the chance of finding a new passion. If a student goes into something knowing that they're only doing it for the sake of a better transcript, it is extremely rare that they will be able to find joy in that activity. Our goal is to redirect that mindset to what it was originally for. Differentiating yourself is so crucial because we don't want to be like everyone. Creating a character and showing off your identity as an individual is intriguing, especially for university students. It's true that quality matters instead of the fact that you just did it. So our advice is to focus on some things, expand on them, explore, on them, explore within them, and do something more. Imagine what our economy would look like today. Eight out of ten of our high school graduates were truly engaged in their education, just as they were in, at, in elementary school, when the ultimate goal was to strike ambition, curiosity, and most importantly, gratif gratification. So when we were first introduced to this event with the theme of success outside of academics, we started brainstorming multiple ideas. Amir and I were both listing all the extracurriculars we were in, and we were trying to come up with out-of-the-box revelations that we could explore further into. It may come off as somewhat hypocritical that two freshmen are talking about doing things for the sake of their passion in their own TED talk. Um, and maybe to some extent that's true. Honestly, we started off suggesting a TED talk for the exact same reason of a stronger transcript. In the midst of all of this, we started looking at negative aspects of these curriculum and decided we want to talk about the unspoken but arising issue of finding success forcefully. But we soon realized how grave this issue truly is. The bigger picture of the added societal expectations and effects to mental health truly changed our perspective. It was different from before when we were just listing ideas. Now we actually wanted to share our findings. The thought that we might leave the stage with even striking a, a notion of change in a single person's mind is really what empowered us to go through with this. If we weren't working towards something that intrigued us or excited us, or if our goal remained to only have a stronger resume, I can assure you the excitement, nervousness, or even the quality of our speech would be lacking. And honestly, we wouldn't have been able to do it. We wouldn't have been here today if it wasn't ambition carrying us out. What might seem like a noticeable change in our mindset is truly how small the step from an obligation to ambition it's okay to find ambition within an obligation. It's okay to work towards a better transcript. But you have to have that passion, the intrigue, and most importantly, the correct mindset. To conclude, as Simon Sinek, 
A New York Times bestselling author and motivational speaker once said, Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion.